Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about what is the reciprocal function and what exactly it graph looks like. So first of all, to understand the reciprocal function, I think the important thing is to understand the identity function. And if we were gonna kind of sketch a quick little graph of the identity function, um, you know, some of us might know exactly what that looks like or other times we might have to just look at a graph. And I think using a table of values, um, not a graph, using a table of values is going to help us out. Now, if we just kind of pick some random numbers here, Let's just pick, uh, let's see, you know, negative, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Um, now we notice that whatever x is, that's what y is. So that's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So therefore, at 1, 1, at 2, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2. So therefore, you can see that's what the graph looks like. Whatever x equals, y equals. So that's the identity function. And to understand the reciprocal function, we got to understand you know, the definition of reciprocal. So let's go back to you know, the basics of understand with fractions. If we have a fraction 1 third and we're looking for the reciprocal, the reciprocal is basically going to be the numerator and denominator flipped. So therefore, the reciprocal would be 3 over 1. If I was looking for um, you know, negative four fifths, the reciprocal is going to be a negative five fourths. The negative doesn't really matter if it's in the numerator or denominator, just wanted to kind of you know, remind you of that. But basically the numerator and denominator are just being flipped. And then another case action here is eight. Well, remember eight is really eight over one. So the reciprocal is going to be one over eight. So when we're talking about the reciprocal function, what we're actually looking at is the reciprocal of y equals x. And the reciprocal of x is kind of similar to like the eight over one. So the reciprocal, fu reciprocal function is y equals 1 over x. All right. So we could look at this, um, again, using a table. And let's just use the same table of values so we can kind of see how that um, changes from the identity function or how that's kind of different. So we could do x, y. So we could do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So now when we plug in negative 2, I'm going to have 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half. If I plug in negative 1 over uh, 1 over negative 1, so I'm plugging in negative 1 over there, I get negative 1. Uh, 1 over 0, uh, we need to understand that 1 over 0 is undefined. 1 over 1 is b1, and 1 over 2 is going to equal, again, 1 half. Now, we could continue this into this pattern, and you could see that if I did 3, then that would be 1 third, and so on and so forth. So, what that does is, and if you're not understanding the pattern, you can keep on going to you know, larger and larger numbers and smaller and smaller numbers to really kind of get this pattern. But let's just go ahead and you know, kind of graph this. Let's look at the positive number. So at 1, we're dealing with 1. Um, at 2, we're dealing with uh, 1 half. And then at 3, we're dealing at 1 third. So it looks like the graph is going all the way to 0. But what we notice is it actually doesn't get lower than 0 because when we come around to the you know, negative numbers, we get at uh, negative 1. At negative 2, we're dealing with 1 half again. And then at negative 3, it would be coming into negative 1 third. So if we did negative 3, that's going to be negative 1 third. Now, to understand the other identity, so we kind of see here it's going this way and here it's going that way. The other way might be able to get into like some fractions. And this is where sometimes it gets a little confusing for some students. But let's just kind of deal with 1 half. So if I did 1 divided by 1 half, multiplied by the reciprocal, that equals 2. So at 1 half, I'm actually up to 2. So what is coming here is this is actually becoming like a hyperbola. Now, we would see, well, does the graph actually cross the x-axis? Does it actually cut over here? Well, we know at 0, it's undefined. So to represent an undefined value, we're going to create a vertical asymptote. And what we can also see is when, no matter what we plug in for x, is y going to equal 0? And let's think about that. If y equals 1 over x, is that ever going to equal or 1 over x equal to 0? Right? That's what we want to figure out. What value here does it actually get to 0? Well, if you were to solve for x, multiply by x on both sides, you can see that 1 equals 0. One is, x is never going to, uh, whatever number we plug for x is never going to equal 0. So there's actually a horizontal asymptote there as well. So the shape of the graph is a hyperbola. Basically, you have these two kind of boomerang-looking figures 
um, that are approaching your vertical and your horizontal asymptotes. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your basic kind of little introduction to the reciprocal function and its graph. Thanks.